talk about it right now. What kind of content should we post? Please think of it like a salad. Mix it up. All right? Do not think to yourself, okay, you know what? I'm going to be a specialized fan page. I'm only going to post articles about X, okay, whatever that topic is. Or I'm only going to post cool photos of yoga poses, uh, the daily pose of the day, and it'll be me just doing a pose. Now, I'm not saying that won't help you. That will get going. That will help you get some attention. But eventually the people who keep coming back, you think they're going to be excited about that? No. Are they going to share it? No. They're just going to know if they want to see thumbnail photos of you uh, in, in various poses, they can come to your fan page. It will eventually become a one-trick horse, and it's not going to get more attention. The best thing you can do is brainstorm some categories of content. All right, Under each category, go out, either create it yourself or find other articles or videos you can post underneath those categories. So it could be things like tips. It could be things like um, information about your studio not blatant posts, but we'll talk about that. And it could be, you know, any reference to people that are students of yours or teachers of yours. So let's go a little bit deeper here. Videos are usually the best. Why do, we, why do I know this? Well, I know this the same way you know this. When you're on Facebook yourself, if you see that little video player in there, you'll usually want to click on it and see what's going on, right? If you're one of those people who's on the bus or you're, you know, just got some idle time, there's nothing cooler than being able to watch one of those little videos on your phone. So if we know this, let's make some videos. Is it hard to make a video? No. Most of these camera phones these days can make great videos in HD. And right from there, they can post to your page. It's amazing. All right? Also, you've got those uh, flip cameras. So all of these things are small investments that, in effect, make you your own little media company that can produce videos on the fly. Now, what kind of videos are we talking about? Let's give you some examples. To start off, videos of your studio. This is great. People, they're curious, right? They have maybe drove or walked by your studio. Um, they've heard about it. Maybe they saw someone wearing a t-shirt with your website. Maybe they've been to your website already, but they haven't been in the door yet. What's really effective is one of those, uh, okay, let's take a tour of our studio. And right from the front door, the camera person is, is walking behind you holding the phone. It doesn't matter if it's shaky like the Blair Witch Project or something like that. It's authentic. It's, it's genuine content. And it's an opportunity for you or whoever does the tour to showcase a very important thing called personality. Right? Most marketing material is really monotonous. It has no heart. It doesn't connect with people. But you walking through your studio just being warm and friendly will make people A, attracted to you, and B, comfortable before they come to your studio for the first class. Imagine how nice it would be to know where I should put my shoes, where I can get a drink of water. Can I rent a mat or anything like that if I forgot mine? These kinds of things, if you can kind of sneak them into a short 90-second video, you will definitely get comments and there will be people walking through your door saying, yeah, I saw the video. All right? If you don't believe me, give it a shot and watch what happens. Next up, Videos of your staff, and by staff I mean your teacher team. And please, something beyond they are a 200 or 500 hour certified teacher. None of us care. We don't care if you're a 10 billion hour certified teacher. We want to know more about who you are as a human being. What makes you tick? What are your interests? Why is it that you enjoy teaching yoga? If you're not talking about those kinds of things, you're no different than the next 200 or 500 hour certified person. So please, be interesting. You are interesting. Just show it online. I think it's really cool if you do a quick video bio of all your teachers. Okay. All right. So sound is cutting in and out. Testing one two one two. I'm going to make sure everybody can hear me. Okay. Fantastic. So I think we're up and running. Everybody can hear me again. If you can hear me, just type yes in the chat box. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. So I'll go over the last point one more time. Just please, in these bios of your teachers, allow them to be individuals and allow them to be interesting because they are. All right? We all know that one of the best assets on our team is the personalities within it. So showcase those. Right? You don't pick, uh, sorry, you don't pick your teacher team based on just ability, right? You've probably noticed there's some people that have amazing ability. 
but as people with you know the charisma to connect with others, maybe they're lacking. And you ended up picking someone for your teacher team that was a better balance between the two. So this is an opportunity for you to create a positive reflection on your studio brand name by showcasing the amazing people behind the scenes. And if you did one bio for each one of your teachers, right there you've got anywhere from you know three to twenty posts depending on how many people work with you. Another example, videos of your students. Okay, question for everybody here. Um, whether you enjoyed it or you didn't enjoy it, have any of you ever watched one episode of a reality television, uh, television series? Okay, be honest. If you, if you have, type yes in the chat box, please. Okay, we've all done it. We've all watched one episode of Survivor or who knows what. One of those reality series where there's a group of people and every episode someone gets eliminated. <clears throat> Why is it that that form of television took off and became the most popular form of television? Why? Well, it's simple. It's because the people watching it can actually connect with the characters. If you go back 20 years, if you watch The Young and the Restless, anybody who isn't 2% body fat can't connect with the characters. They're all models. They're all perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. And they are able to date nine people in the same circle of friends without getting in trouble. However, reality TV allows everybody to have that one person that they can kind of say, hey, I'm kind of like that guy or I'm kind of like that girl. Further to that, it also allows them to say, oh, there's, there's the antagonist. I, I hate those kinds of people. So it draws them in. Why am I talking about this? Because if you can put videos of your students, and I want a wide variety. I want the student that discusses they simply had really bad back pain or they couldn't even touch their toes. That's how uh, tight their hamstrings were. And they're talking about their hesitations before joining. So an example could be, you know, a man in his 40s saying, well, I was a little bit, you know, scared of going to my first class. I wasn't sure, you know, if I was going to pull something or if they were going to tell me to put my foot behind my head. But I was relieved. You know, the team at ABC Studio was extremely accommodating. They made me feel comfortable. And after eight short weeks, I can now pl uh, put my hands flat on the ground. My back sniffness is starting to go away, and I'm so happy I did it. Okay, that could be one example. Another example could be someone who comes for weight loss. You know, they can talk about the fear they had of coming into a yoga room. You may not remember this. It's maybe have, has been so long since you did your first class that you forgot how intimidating it is to come into a room where everybody's half naked and they're in good shape and you're not. Well, let's get someone who just went through that and now is, is completely satisfied and excited and happy that they've gone through the transformation of scared to do yoga to loving it and doing it every week. Let's get someone who talked about weight loss. Also, injury rehab. Anybody who has an injury usually gets recommended some form of yoga training. So let's find someone that had that torn muscle or that bad shoulder that has no range of motion and get them to talk about their initial hesitations and the payoff of going for it. Okay? So brainstorm some ideas. Start to think about which students you have a strong enough relationship with that they'll help you out and do this quick little video and get it up there. It's going to do wonders for your business because the main reason people do not come to a yoga studio is simply laziness and intimidation. Okay? So let's remove all the intimidation and give them someone that they can connect to, just like those reality uh, TV series. Okay, let's continue with our content salad. I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit. Photos of classes are great. So you snap a photo of a busy class. Okay, You put up a post that says, maybe 7 p.m. on Sunday, everybody getting ready for the week with yoga. Always tag your teachers. You must tag your teachers. Thank you, Erica. I appreciate the kind words. Um, you must tag your teachers. What I mean by tagging is in your post, you can use the at symbol. Everybody take two seconds to look down at your keyboard. It should be the number two. There's a little at symbol above it. You've all used this quite frequently when you're sending emails. Well, when you're writing a post on Facebook, if you type the at symbol in your post and then a couple letters of someone's name afterwards, Facebook will find any of your friends with that name. So my name's John. If you go at J-O-N, it'll find John Malik. When you tag people in a post, something very powerful happens. It puts the post on their page too. 
Thank you, Greg. Now, Greg made a good comment. He said you can only tag people that you're connected to, not your fans. That, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. When you're tagging people, tag your teachers. What am I suggesting? Be friends with your teachers on Facebook. Okay? So make sure you're friends with all your teachers and tag them when you put up a photo of them teaching class. What that will do is it will post the same information on their page, multiplying the number of eyes that will see that post. Okay? Beyond that, you can also tag a fan page. People don't realize this, but you can tag your own fan page in these posts so that that way it goes to your fan page, your personal account, and anybody that you tagged in it. Now, one more thing I want to mention. If it's okay with them, tag students. One of the most powerful things you can do is let somebody's friends know that they take yoga at your studio. We're not going to do a blatant promotion saying, did you know that John Smith does yoga at ABC Studio? That's only going to annoy people. But what we can do is tag a photo of everybody in a cool pose, nothing too crazy, no pretzels, please. You know, just a nice regular pose that everybody could do. And from there, just put the post. Great class, everyone. Awesome energy, awesome vibes. So good to have you in the studio today. By tagging some of your students in there, what, what do you think will happen? Well, I'll give you an example. John Smith gets tagged in the, in the photo. Or let's use a lady, Susan Smith, okay? She's tagged. You mouse over the tag, and you can see she's right there in the middle of the class, right in the mix with everybody. What do you think her friends are going to say? Probably something like, hey, Susan, you look great. Or, Susan, I didn't know you do yoga. Where do you do it? Guess what she's going to write back? You're creating a conversation about your studio without even forcing it. All you did is take a photo and tag people. It's interesting. If you don't think people are interested in knowing what other people are doing, then I'd question why does Facebook exist? Everybody wants to know what other people are doing. That's why they log in. So why not let people know about the students you have doing yoga? It will create referrals. Okay, so I went a little bit in depth on that one. I'm going to keep moving here. Next up, please take this lightly, but usually text sucks. Okay, what I mean by that is just those long paragraph posts that you put up. Most people don't really like to read them. They just don't. They're, they're kind of uh, noise on the page. Most people look for links to photos or videos. But let's be realistic here. We're not always going to have great fo uh, photos or videos ready to go, so we do need to mix it up and put some text in there. Here's the text I recommend you use. First up, conversational posts. This is a chance for you to showcase your personality. Right? So here's an example. It's raining today, but we're still going to make the best of it by doing this. What are you going to do with the rainy day today? Well, what am I doing? First of all, I'm showing that the attitude of our studio is that we take negatives and turn them into positives. Secondly, I think it's an age-old conversation topic, the weather. Third of all, you ask a question. What are you going to make of the day today? And it's great. As soon as people start to respond, other people will see that they comment on that post. So one more time, I post up a conversational topic. It could be anything. Right? I recommend it's related to your brand, related to your service, but something indirect that will create a conversation. Then, when someone responds to that post and puts up their own little bit, it will show on their page. Susan Smith commented on ABC Studios post. This is how we get more people to the fan page. Polls. There's lots of cool poll software out there that you can integrate with your fan page. It doesn't cost anything to use it. And it's interesting. People like to know what other people think. Um, I don't know if you remember that horrible game show, Family Feud. Survey says everybody used to watch that show, partially to see what family would win, but mostly because they're interested to just kind of know those weird little facts and, and what are the most uh, popular responses. Well, you can do the same thing, but relate those things back to yoga. Okay? Polls about your studio. What's your favorite class? What's your favorite pose? What color is your yoga mat? Just anything that gets the conversation flowing and the outside bystanders look at all these people interested in the same topic and what do they want to do? They want to be like every other human and gain acceptance by participating. So polls are a great way to get more conversations and more attention on your brand. Next up, praise. Now what do I mean by this? One of the best and most powerful things you can do when you're limited to text 
is just plan to compliment someone maybe three times a week or twice a week. Now, 